again welcome 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 thank you so much for opening the video i'm claudia and i am in downtown jamaica today and today i have with me as well tony ann hi everyone i just love downtown tony remember we used to come downtown we used to buy fabric fabric sell it yeah the market all about the place I have good memories and I have bad memories. You have bad memories of downtown? Yeah, man. Are you this robbed? is where, this is now as a rob, but don't you? Well, them, them some fire me. <laughs> <laughs> I sell me wash over chain for gold chain. <laughs> but that happens when you want something for nothing, right? True. Um, but, ladies and gentlemen, you know, downtown Kingston, Jamaica, the government of Jamaica have lots of plans for downtown Kingston, actually on Harbour Street. And today I'm doing part two of a video series. Hey, this is where we used to go, right? Yeah, this was Shukir. Shukir. Shukir, um, Street. Today, as I come down into downtown, remember we, we talk about partnerships, right? It's a part of the wealth series. I mean, how do you actually get wealthy, you know? And so we're going to be doing, the, when I was doing marketing, I learned some P's, right? The four P's of marketing. So I have developed the five P's of wealth creation, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> what are they to that? Partnership, mm -hmm. planning, purchasing, preserving, and finally protecting. Right, so what do you do this, build this wealth? through a business or through getting real estate or whatever buying some shares some stocks you still have to go you still have to use these right partnerships so partnerships is a main one and we actually have partnerships one partnership two partnership three so we're now in the partnership two series and as I come down onto Harbour Street ah that man went through the light you know, I look at these buildings and I used to come down here with my mother as well. I used to go up, up in the market, Coronation Market. These buildings, they still look the same to me. I mean, which means a lot of them have been like this for a long time. <laughs> mm, a really long time. Like this one here on our So left. the families who own these didn't think that they could preserve this, right? Or protect it, you know? And if they couldn't do it on their own, they could have partnered. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about partnerships today, but I'm going to use some case studies of other companies who have partnered. And as I look ahead of me, I see a great company, Grace Kennedy. Grace Kennedy is one of the stalwarts, one of the giants in Jamaica, right? Grace Kennedy is actually a food company. It started out as a food company. And as I look at this building, I remember the little building i used to have a cousin used to it's work here. Still here it's still here see it's here this blue building a cousin used to work here karen and look at this they put up now in front beside them yeah beside them beside them the grace kennedy building so grace kennedy have backed out their monies and they have invested you know so how did grace when did grace kennedy start it started in 1922 valentine's day actually february 14 1922 where were we in 1922? Not, not alive. Not even conceived yet. <laughs> <laughs> so all of this is on their website, ladies and gentlemen. But I just want to use Grace Kennedy as a case study to show you how partnerships will work. So Dr. John J. Grace and Fred William Kennedy came together and formed this company, Grace Kennedy. Now, at the time, both men worked for Grace Limited, right? So they worked for Grace Limited, which was a subsidiary of WR Grace Company. That's who they worked for, right? And this was a company in New York at the time, and they worked for that company. And then that company decided that, oh, we're going to close down this branch in Jamaica. Not because Jamaica was doing well as a company out here, but because apparently they were having some struggles in New York. So they wanted to close down Jamaica. And these two men, these two co-workers decided to come together and open this company called Grace Kennedy, right? So they opened the company 
and I tell you today Grace Kennedy is one of the Caribbean's largest companies ladies and gentlemen they have over 60 subsidiaries I mean you know their subsidiaries like Western Union right Tony we use that one a lot Bill Express Bill Express yeah that's a, that's a, the one where we pay our bills right um, they also have a bank their bank is first global oh yeah 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 I'm a, I also have an account at first and they have another one like a FX traders FX traders right, right. so as you can see ladies and gentlemen so they started in 1922 and today they are giants just by two co-workers coming together and, and decided that you know we can do this right we can do this so ladies and gentlemen Grace Kennedy is a prime example of persons working together now another company that I, I really admire is the National Baking Company now that company you know for its bread right um, used to be HTB bread now it's the national bread HTB I think they bought out HTB at some point HTB was a company of itself at one point and then they bought it out but this company was started by the Hendrickson family um, to be exact it was Reginald Hendrickson who actually started that company and he started it as a small little bakery in St. Elizabeth then he moved to Mandeville then he moved to Kingston <laughs> can you imagine right and he had two sons right he had two sons who came on board Carl and Larry Hendrickson now Carl I understand that all of this is on the website and I need to make a disclaimer, I don't work for Grace Kennedy. I don't work for the National Bakery Company, right? We work for our own company, right? So, Carl actually pumped up the, the, the production and the distribution. He brought in new technology, right? He brought in machinery that could give, that gave us sliced bread and packaged it in plastic bag, right Tony? <laughs> but you remember when um hard dough sliced bread came into Jamaica? Yes. That was like a big thing. Thin you know? Yeah. So we used to have that thin one before yeah. and nobody liked that. Yeah and then they gave us the hard dough the hard dough sliced bread. But you know when the, the I'm just showing you how so this is a family company now, right? So they started I understand that before when, when Carl took over we were getting the bread in. Which road is this though? Windward, Windward Road. Road. Windward Road. Right. Windward Road guy. We were this well, they should let's hope they resurface this as well. We were getting the bread in paper bag Tony. Bro, the music wrap it in a brown bag. Brown bag and give us. Oh I don't remember. <laughs> no, I don't remember it either. And these guys, this company had four vans and four carts. Can you imagine carrying around the bread with carts? I wonder if it did draw by a donkey. <laughs> Can you imagine? Right? But that's what happened, right? Then in 1954, they started baking buns. They went to sliced breads, went to biscuits. Uh, then they started to try and distribute island wide. And you know, they, they formed a partnership as well. So they formed a partnership with a company called, what was the name of the company, Tony? ITT yeah ITT Continental um, Bakery Company so they formed a partnership with that company and of course that partnership helped to increase their knowledge you know gave them some resources that they needed at the time also this was like an overseas company yeah it's an okay. overseas company and they partnered so they partnered when they needed to to get the knowledge you know and to, to expand their brand because I guess what they knew couldn't expand to the vision that they had right and can you just imagine this grandfather or this great grandfather, right, Reginald Hendrickson, when he started baking, love baking, and his vision for what he wanted. Tony, and can you imagine? This man must have got to in bed every night and said, No, yeah, man, I, I want to be able to listen. You know, I want a bread. I want to see my bread in ev at everybody's dining table. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now, certainly. It's one of the products that 
you don't have to go far every corner shop every supermarket everybody have this national bread right so they, they, they did that and through one of his sons or both his sons they were able to expand the company right so they started acquiring other companies too so they, they bought out Wholesome Bakery, which is in Mandeville. Those of you remember that one. United Bakery, which is in Maypen, And Hannah Town Bakery, which was HTB. I remember Hannah Town Bakery. My mother used to send me when I live at Jonestown. Used to go by, used to bring HTB bread. <laughs> yeah, HTB bread. <laughs> yeah, I remember I that. actually remember that too. Mm -hmm. HTB bread. So I'm actually on Minard Road and they have just showing you that they oh, have, this part got fixed yeah they have resurfaced this part so it's a beautiful road now to the airport actually um, I would say if you have property down on this side you want to consider starting to fix it up you know get it back your parents or your grandparents have property down here let's hope you haven't allowed anybody to take it over right but the road is in now all right so we're talking about the national bakery company then in 1994 gary butch hendrickson he came along now he's a son now of carl so remember now carl took over from the grandfather and then gary who is a son of carl he now took over and he continued the modernization pro process he upgraded he moved the level of operations to the next level and he started to expand Easter buns into the UK right and they started another product that I love this is a bread it's a health line bread it's they have cinnamon and oats they have oh that's the one we have to keep in the fridge yeah I keep it in the fridge it's, it, they have raisin and it's cinnamon raisin and oats and honey one is honey okay yeah but those ones I love right so ladies and gentlemen this family started nine bakers and eight salesmen and they actually I mean they started with that you know with four vans and four cards nine bakers and eight salesmen and what nine. them have today you know <laughs> over 1,000 staff members 20, what 220,000 square feet of facility two manufacturing plants in Kingston and Montego Bay, oh. overseas distributorship, over 1,000 truck, 100 truck fleet. Oh, that's huge! That's huge. That's huge. Now, those are companies that you, I mean, you want to emulate, you only can admire their, their strength. There, just imagine the determination, the stick to itiveness, I call it sticking to it, you know, ensuring that this thing happens right they didn't run away and leave their their um their legacies or left their companies their fathers and mothers businesses to flounder i can just imagine some of these children went overseas don't they tony they probably all did right now i don't know any of these um family members I, i've never seen them never spoken to them i don't know any of them right but I can just imagine that maybe one or two of them went overseas, got some first world training, and came back. What do you think? That's possible, isn't it? That's probably what happened. So that they could um, come back and invest in the family business and invest in Jamaica. Right. And even through all of the problems that was happening in Jamaica, you notice when these companies started? 1965. I was born in 1966. So this company started in and around the time I was born. Now my mother, I remember had a hairdressing salon and my father had a beef shop. Now if they were, if they had stuck together, still together, then I guess I could have come and, um, but you all know the story so my father threw me out. So I never had a chance to do any of that, right? My mom ran away. And my mom ran away to the States, right? So another great company though is um, a company that really admires with Cinco with Cinco. They actually started in 1965. Oh, so they're a pretty young company. Yeah, they started the year before I was born. Oh, when did um, the Baker Company start? That was in 1965. That was way before then. 1952. 1952. That would have probably been when who 
born now. I don't even know anybody. Ooh, yeah, I probably know some of my older friends would have been born there. But we sync up. It's another strong company in Jamaica. Very strong company. And they started basics as well. So their father, you have heard the name of food all the time. Their father, Joe Mafood, he started producing boots you know those water boots that we were in factories and so on oh that's what he did yeah he started that and he was manufacturing 60 pairs of these boots per hour They're you know far what I beyond mean? that now yeah it must be well no they stopped doing that now and you know they worked hours to get this thing done in 1965 though the same year when he started the company apparently his two sons were born. Andrew Mafood and William Mafood were born. <laughs> double pressure. <laughs> pressure. Double pressure. Right? <laughs> so, I guess he had a reason to make this company here work now. My people for feed, right? So, you know, they went on and expanded into plastic shoes. They, opened, they got bigger factory spaces. And we think uh, after a while, I understand, swapped out the equipment with a Haitian producer. I started producing some shoes named Gator Shoes. Now I remember those. I used to wear those. My mother used to buy those shoes for me. Gator Shoes. They were like what? School shoes? School, school sneakers. School sneakers? <laughs> yeah, oh. like sneakers. I remember those. And then they started producing the plastic cups and containers, which I still do. So you still buy those plastic forks and plastic spoons oh. and paper plates and so on. Okay. That's the company that made it. I also remember they gave us this beer carry beer and shandy and they were the ones who started distributing chubby out of trinidad oh i remember when chubby remember chubby 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 chubby, 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 chubby. <laughs> i remember that it was a huge hit when it came into the island yeah it was chubby 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 i remember it um there's still, there's a company now that still use that little bottle but i don't know i don't buy it so i'm not even sure but i think chubby might still be around i don't i don't know if it's still around um and then they went on to do other things, ladies and gentlemen. But we think is a company now that is distributing. Um, they gave us, you know what they gave us as really famous for them now? Water. Water, the water, the water. Oh yeah, WAT. When you go WAT, when you go into a, a, a soup, I'm a, a, I go into this grocery store. I said, give me a bottle of water. You're the lady. You want water, you want cran water. I said, lady, I want a bottle of water. We never ask you no more no cran water. <laughs> so, we think also gave us this cran water thing. And the marketing was so good that now you have to make a distinction when you ask for water. You have to make sure you tell them, say, I just plain old water you want. You don't want a cran water. <laughs> because the, the, the promotion and the, the, the marketing was so strong that they have us saying you you want cran water i want water i know like i went in i went to a, a man on the road a little cart man and i asked him no, this I, is harborview to harborview tour. going out to st thomas okay and i asked him for a bottle of water and he's like you want water or you want the regular stuff yeah what, like, what, what you know <laughs> what, what's the regular stuff really <laughs> and the thing is water brand is everywhere yeah, it is. Every little person upon the corner. I mean, everywhere. It's in every single. I remember we had, we used to have bottled water from Catherine Peak first, remember? Mm hmm. And we, we wouldn't buy it. it. We still have it, but nobody wouldn't buy it. We used to carry igloo the same way. Now we think I came now. And we think I make her buy water for $100. Not only that, too, Catherine's <laughs> Peak is spring water and yeah. water is purified drinking water. water. Yes, yet. We, they have convinced us so much that we need to have this bottle of water in our hands. Very well done to the Wisinka people. You know, so those three companies there, Wisinka, Grace Kennedy, and the National Baking Company. HTV, they still have it. They still have it. Oh, they still have HTV. Yeah. Oh, they still, they kept the brand. They okay. kept the brand. Cool. So, Ladies and gentlemen, partnerships is important. In our first partnerships, we talked about partner with family, friends, government, and institutions. I just showed you today that these companies 
they're giants today. They're mega, mega companies because they partnered. They started out partnering with co-workers, family. They stayed together. They brought in overseas partners when they needed to. What else they did? They got government partnerships when they needed to. Borrowed money when they needed to because at one point we think I borrowed money to expand their factories and so on. Right? And they understand the importance of family partnership from the get-go. From the get-go. That's important. It doesn't make sense for us to go, your, your mother, your father, your grandfather, start this little aki tree and then you come, somebody come cut it down and go plant a different aki tree. Hmm? <laughs> All it needs is somebody to water it, right? Yeah. Water it and plant another aki tree beside it. So instead of one aki tree bearing, now you have two and so on and so forth. So ladies and gentlemen. And not only that, too, the soil is already fertile because it grew one aki tree. So you know one second one is going to grow too. Yeah. Instead of you trying to go find another, another piece of land that you don't even know if anything can grow on it. Exactly. You know? So we have to build the partnerships. Now I'm heading out to Bull Bay. This road is is a road that is slated is going to be developed maybe the next time i come on it's not going to look like this the chinese have finished the mandela highway so they will be heading here next they're putting in a road from the roundabout at harbour view straight to meet a road in portland that was done previously wow can you imagine it's a long stretch yes it is a long stretch and they are committed to doing that for jamaica right so what is our commitment to jamaica we must have partnerships. We're complaining about our government partnering with the Chinese. But ladies and gentlemen, the truth is we can't do it alone. There's no one person or one government or one entity that can do things on their own. We must partner if we want to move forward, right? right. Yeah. So the next video we're going to be talking about partnership just the same, but we have to bring in different partners as well. We have to bring in mentors, motivators coaches teachers. teachers you have to bring on some catalysts and some igniters <laughs> <laughs> and you have to bring on some people who egg you on you don't know what that mean go and look it up they egg you on and some enablers who enable you to do things all right so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for being on this journey with us and we want you to think about it partner and as you listen to us through our video series, I just want you to have an open mind. Let us see if we can move Jamaica to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, have a beautiful, beautiful day. Bye everyone, have a wonderful day.